I'm not a Democrat, I'm running independently. Uh, uh, I had that breakfast with him uh, last week, and I said, you know, Mike, when you come and speak to us today, really explain to us why we as conservatives should prefer you over the other candidate. So I'm expecting that you will do that. So here it is, Mike McCormick. Thank you, Dr. Jack, and it's my pleasure to be here this afternoon. One of the very first things I had to do after being promoted to sergeant years ago was learn how to spell it. So that, that, that's one thing that I, I do have down. And one, one of my goals, even if, it, if you had not brought it up, would be to explain why you should vote for that. And then there's a lot of reasons. The sheriff's race is extremely important this year. Probably more important than it has been in my memory. We've got a $43 million detention facility that's going to be opening up. It's going to start off housing 350 plus prisoners. It's going to expand to approximately 500 within a year. It's going to be a big factor in Darwin County. But let me back up just a little, just a little bit. Let me explain why I'm running as an independent candidate because it's very important. It's a question I get asked a lot. When it comes to law enforcement, I don't believe partisan politics has any place in law enforcement. In fact, I know it has no place in law enforcement. Everybody, everybody deserves to be treated equally, fairly, professionally, with respect. You've got to make the right decisions without trying to please any particular party interest group, you've got to serve the people. As a sheriff, which is the chief law enforcement official in Garland County, you're elected by the people. It's the only law enforcement position in local government that is elected by the people that directly serves the people. The independence is crucial. I've spent over 30 years in local law enforcement. In the early 80s, I was hired by Clay White, then sheriff, as a jailer. I was 22 years old. Shortly thereafter, I was hired by the Hot Springs Police Department, where I served the rest of my career up to this point in law enforcement, before retiring about two years ago. I worked in every division. I served at every rank, from patrol officer, to corporal, to sergeant, to lieutenant, and was interim chief before retiring. I served as a narcotics officer for the entire county, uh, along with the sheriff's deputy. It was just the two of us. I've worked street crime. I've worked traffic enforcement. I've walked the beat. I've been a, a patrol officer. And then a patrol sergeant, a lieutenant, uh, over the services division. I've been a CID commander. I've investigated homicides. I've investigated murder. Uh, uh, I work every aspect that a person can work in local law enforcement. Uh, basically no exceptions that I'm aware of. So I have a lot of experience in, in law enforcement. Probably more directed towards the sheriff's qualification is I've managed budgets. I've created and managed an $11 million budget. It was my prime responsibility, and I was pretty successful at it. I've supervised over 130 employees, and law enforcement officers are not an easy bunch to supervise. It does take unique skill and experience and ability. I've been recognized over the years. I've had a congressional letter of recognition. I've had three letters of commendation from the Secretary of State. And I tell you that not to brag, and it's hard for me to, to really even say that, because I'm a modest person. But I've been recognized for my leadership ability and my service to the community, repeatedly. Let's get to the crutch of what 
Meet Sheriff is all about. The Constitution is where the authority comes from. The Constitution is the basis for all laws that are in Arkansas and throughout the United States. The U.S. Constitution and the Arkansas Constitution. And I never forget that. And I stress that at every presentation I'm at and basically everybody I talk to. You know, I consider myself a constitutional sheriff. I'm once again the only elected law enforcement official in Garland County. And that responsibility to uphold the Constitution falls directly on my shoulder. And I will never shirk that responsibility, I assure you. I have always had a three-pronged test that I fell back upon when making decisions over the years, and I will continue to do this. Is it ethical? Is it moral? Is it legal? If it meets those qualifications, we move on to the next step. If it does not, that's the end. And I feel like that falls right in line with my beliefs in the Constitution. One of the most important responsibilities a sheriff has to the people is to reduce crime. That's where the rubber hits the road. And all you have to do is open up the newspaper on any day. Any day, and you're going to read about one crime after another. That is where my focus will be. The crime doesn't reduce itself just on its own accord. You have to have a plan. And law enforcement can't do it all by ourselves. If it could, we wouldn't have a crime problem. If it could be solved by pouring money on it, we wouldn't have a problem. The crime doesn't respond that way. Crime is a community issue. We've got to have community involved. And my police philosophy falls right along the lines of community-oriented policing. We've got to get the people involved. We've got to have a problem-solving approach to everything we do. It can be something as minor as having a speeding problem on your road. It could be something as serious as your house being invaded by thugs at 2 o'clock in the morning. They're on the far ends of the spectrum, but they have to be approaching a problem to solve a music play. What's happened over the years, and especially within county law enforcement because of limited resources, this is strictly a reactive response by law enforcement. In other words, if you have some vandalism at your house, you call and if a deputy comes out, a report is taken, and that's the end of it. There's no follow-up. My administration, the deputies that work under that administration, are going to receive training. They're going to see, uh, show encouragement to solving problems versus just taking a report. I'll give you a perfect example. Several years ago, I built a house off of Jessica Lodge lived there several years. I don't live there now. Uh, and I had a lawnmower that was stolen. I never thought about calling the Sheriff's Department for a report. Can anybody tell me why? Don? We're good and good. Exactly. The only purpose it would have served is for insurance reasons. And the deductible was too high to cover that. No reason to call. I want to change that. I want to build the confidence back in the sheriff's office where if you have any problems, you call. We'll respond and we'll try to solve your problem. If you solve the problem, you don't have to make 20 other calls out there over the next three years. And that's what we've got. It's just a revolving door with report taken, report taken, report taken, and it serves no body other than drawn insurance issues. A lot of the time. I'm not saying there's not exceptions. But a lot of the time, the majority of the time, that's the way it is. We got a major issue with drugs in Garland County. And early on in my career, I worked in narcotics before. I was in at the undercover level. And we made a lot of arrests. We put a lot of people in jail. We sent a lot of people to prison. Guess what? 
it's 10 times worse today than it was 25 years ago. We can't let our efforts down. We've got to keep the enforcement up. And we will do that. And we'll work through the Drug Task Force and other means on enforcing the laws in Garland County. We will do everything that we can. But at the same time, I know in the back of my mind, it is minimally effective. And will always be minimally effective. And, and people in the know on this, and, and probably everybody in this room knows how ineffective it is. We've got a huge problem in Garland County. We've got a problem with meth, uh, methadone, and it just goes on and on and on. It, it, I mean, it's, it's totally out of control. The enforcement's got to continue. The enforcement's got to increase. The new jail is going to help. And I look at the jail as a hammer. Part of the solution is a hammer. If you mess up, this is where you will end up. Because right now, we're not pe putting people in jail for, for minor drug violations because we've got violent people we've got to put in. So those people aren't going to jail at this point for most drug violations. There's no hammer. And it just, it just rolls and gets worse and worse all the time. We've got to have rehabilitation. We've got to have education. We've got to have alternative sentences. We've got a great program in our local uh, court system, in the drug court. I've seen tremendous results from that. We've got to keep it up. Something that I actually started locally was the D.A.R.E. program. And it's kind of fallen by the wayside over the last few years. But 25 years ago when that program was implemented, it was focused on and it was, it was inputted at the sixth grade level. It was pretty effective. It was pretty effective. We need programs like that revived, and we need more programs. I've heard different numbers, but approximately 90% of all our crime ties right back into drug use. If your car is broken into, more than likely that's someone that's trying to get money to buy some meth or get his next fix. So the drug issue is, is a major focus, and, and we've got to keep it up. But it also is a community problem, too. The community's got to be involved in that. Okay. Something that is not talked about a whole lot in Garland County is our domestic violence issues that we have. And a lot of times it goes unheard and unseen. But we've got a major problem. We've got a major problem. And as the sheriff, I'm working towards problem solving. We've got to make sure our deputies are trained to recognize domestic violence in the early stages. If an officer or a deputy makes a call to a house five times and nothing is done, then that person ends up dead. Or that person ends up in intensive care. We've all heard it. Hey, the police have been there five times. The sheriff's office has been there five times. Why didn't they see that? They're not trained. They're not paying attention. We've got to make sure that our law enforcement personnel are well trained. Uh, and I would guess there's people in here that have been touched firsthand by domestic violence. We also got to work our priorities around to where the more important things get the more attention. We've got to focus on getting more deputies out there in the county. There are times when there's only two cars patrolling the entire Garland County. That's not acceptable. That's disgraceful. We've got to prioritize our resources within the Sheriff's Office so where we have at the least minimum staffing numbers out there in the county. We're talking 800 square miles in Garland County. That's going to be one of the very top priorities. You call the Sheriff's Department, you have someone respond. Another issue that is, is dear to my heart and it's affected me per, per, uh, personally is senior safety and those that are more vulnerable. We don't ever turn our backs on the senior population in Garland County. Now, I'm not going to do it. I never have. I have done it. And I've seen firsthand family-wise where an elderly relative was abused by someone as simple as going to the door trying to sell magazines. It seems you know, non-threatening. Those people get very violent. Those people extort money out of the senior community. 
we need to address that on a problem-solving manner. We need to have easy, easy two-way access to our senior citizens and those who fund it. And Sheriff Sanders actually has implemented some really good programs that help our senior population. And that's going to be something I will continue and will hold very close to me. We've got to get the officers in all the schools in Garland County, and currently some of them have resource officers. We need to build on that. We need to make sure we have the right people in the schools. Within the department, we've got some problems at the Sheriff's Department right now. And we've all seen it. We've seen the, the Neil Parliament issue uh, where he was arrested for uh, transporting a, a minor over state lines for prostitution. Uh, he's in the federal pen right now. We make national news on some of the escapes that have occurred <laughs> at Garland County. I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. I know situations can happen. Situations will happen when I'm sheriff. But I will hold people accountable and I will do everything that I possibly can to have the foresight and the direct direct the sheriff's office to where those things are, are minimized. And when they do happen, they'll be followed up on. Professional. Law enforcement is what I'm all about. It's what I've always been about. And for those that have followed my career at all, I think you would uh, find that to be accurate. My opponents, they're good men. They're good men. There was a, there was a public service program that NBC did, or series, that NBC did, uh, that, that said the more you know, and it ran 10 years, you, you may recall it, I don't think it's been on the air in the last five or six, the more you know, and then they would have a celebrity talk to you about parenting, parenting or spousal abuse, or getting educated, the more you know. It was never more true in a local election than right now. The more you know about the qualifications of the people that are running, the Garland County Sheriff, the better decision you will make. You need to look towards proven leadership, education, training, connection to the community. Please look at all these issues very closely. My number one opponent has never risen above the rank of corporal, but yet he wants to run a $12 million operation. He wants to supervise 200 employees. Please look hard at the qualifications before you make the decision of who's going to be the next year on November the 4th. Something that's extremely important to me, and I know it, it falls in line with being a successful sheriff, you have to be accessible to the public. And that's exactly what I will do, and that's exactly what I've done my entire career. People will be able to get hold of me. I've got an open door policy. I have one in the past. I will have one in the future as a sheriff. I'll be someone that you can call, you can get hold of, and I will respond. I will also, and I'll wind down after this, I will require my deputy to be responsive to the public, to be respectful to the public, to be committed to the public, and I also will require that they follow up on their investigations. If I call, something happens tomorrow and I call the Sheriff's Department and my lawnmower is taken, I will expect that deputy to do the appropriate follow-up. I understand resources are tight. But just getting in this continual snowball effect is not acceptable to me. We will have a professional sheriff's department, not sure you know, administration. I'm looking forward to some questions. Let me start. Um, that's the privilege of being chairman. Um, this group is probably most 
uh, interested in, in what you said about being a constitutional sheriff. But as I sat there, I said, well, that's a nice catchphrase. I need feet put to that. I'm thinking in terms of Second Amendment and what if they started the federal government coming for our guns? Uh, what is your position on illegal immigration? Uh, in other words, really explain to me what constitutional sheriff is and specifically on what issues have you stand. And then I'll go into a little more detail. As a constitutional sheriff, I am the last barrier this community has between you and the federal government. Yes. As the sheriff, and I started on this, and, and, I'm, and I'm gonna harp on it. The only elected law enforcement official in Garland County, the chief law enforcement official in Garland County. The sheriff is the only one that can take that stand. That's my starting place. But there's a lot more that goes with that. You have to approach this well before you have any issues. If the issues are knocking at your front door, buddy, it's too late, more than likely. You have to respond to these issues right from the get-go. You have to let people know where you stand. You have to let people know what you will put up with. It's a team effort. Don't, don't get me wrong, this, this law enforcement thing is too big for one agency. You've got to bring people in. You've got to bring other departments in when you need them. You need to pull their resources in when you need them. But you need to make it perfectly clear up front, hey, this is my county. This is my county. And be aware, my, my focus is taking care of the people within this county. And that's where my local is lie. And, I, and, I, and I'm sure I'll get some more questions on, on a little follow-up on that. More specifically, let's say that a, uh, some agent of the federal government comes in here to seize food, stored food, weapons, uh, or any of the other things that are, they're not supposed to, would you be an oath keeper who will arrest them and stop them from violating our constitutional rights? You're the only one who can actually arrest federal agents. The only one. Will you do it? I'm not dodging your question, but I'll tell you this. I would, I would address that as I would any criminal that was trying to take those items. If it came right down to it, I'm going to try to work those things out where it never occurs. If they know, hey, my informant, let's stay away from there. It comes right down to it, the base of all my authority, the reason I'm here is to support that Constitution. If it comes down to it, yes, I would. I would try to work things out prior to that. And I'll do everything I can. But when it comes right down, I would Federal funding runs out. It might have been a two-year program. 
guess what? At the end of those two years, it's gone. What happened to all that training? Officers were trained, changes were made. What happened then? This, this information just wasn't passed on and standards maintained. Well, and I can't make a comment on that particular situation because I don't know. That comes back to the leadership within that organization. Apparently they dropped the ball. But I don't know the rest of the I couldn't intelligently answer that question. That's what government programs say. Anyway, I just want to make a statement right here, right now. I'm supporting my performance. Because, not because I've known him for 15 years, but because I believe that he's the most capable of running the sheriff's department. Let me make a statement. When he was the interim chief, all of a sudden, there were people that worked in the uh, police department that kind of wanted to get buddy-buddy with Mike because they knew that if he was the uh, police chief, that, uh, that he was going to be his buddy. So we've got the same thing going on in the sheriff's department. There are people in the sheriff's department that need discipline. So I want to know, and whenever you, your friends left you, I think some of them did it with your buddies after someone showed somebody else the police chief. But what will you do as a sheriff going into the department? And keep this in mind, if you're in the department and you're going to become the sheriff, the people that are there are already your buddies, so nothing's going to change, in my opinion. So what can you do? You know that you're going to fight a battle when you get in there. What are you going to do to make uh, some disciplinary actions, or how can you go about doing that? They need some leadership. Leadership is lacking. That's why the issues that have occurred have occurred. And, and that's a tremendous point. One of the candidates is, is running, is currently working within the, the Sheriff's Department. And it's hard to break out of that culture. You do need a, a fresh perspective. You do need someone with new ideas, new leadership ability. The Sheriff's Office has been very limited on their funding over the years. And it's not the deputy's fault in particular. It's because the money has not been available for them to get the training that I think they need. There's other ways to go about it. And I'm going to be working very hard on those. Because training is one of the foundations of any successful department. And I don't think they've got the training that they need to be a professional organization. They've got some great guys, but we've got to build on that. Going in, I'm going to make my expectations very, very clear. And I've actually already been doing it. I've had several conversations with deputies that are currently working there. And one thing I've found, I, I was kind of surprised the first couple of times, they really don't even know what good leadership is. They've never been exposed to it. I will bring that to the sheriff's office. I know leadership. I'm a proven leader. I'm a proven successful leader. I've had positive results. You know what you're getting when you get me in there as sheriff. Someone that, you're not born knowing how to be a leader. People have propensities to that, I believe I do, but you build on it with education, you build on it with experience. Sometimes you have a failure, sometimes you have a success, you certainly better uh, uh, learn from your failure. Uh, I will set a clear example of expecta expectations, <coughs> leadership, I'm going to have written policies, they will know from me verbally, they will know from me in written form, they will know what is expected. And they will be held accountable if they don't follow the guidelines. And I fully expect the vast majority of those deputies to get right in line. Because they're craving leadership. They're craving knowledge. They just don't have it available to, available to them right now. They will under my administration. And if they do not comply with the new professional standard, I believe in progressive disciplinary action. It's something that I've used my entire career. You start off with minor violations with, with a low level of correction, maybe just a verbal, and then as the non-compliance say continues, the disreaction gets steeper and steeper and steeper. Of course, there's certain violations that can terminate immediately. There's certain violations that you're arrested immediately. And let, let me just touch on that. I will not, will not turn my back on any kind of criminal violations whatsoever. If there's a crime violated, they will be arrested, and it will not take me 
very long. As soon as I have enough evidence, they will be arrested. Everyone's going to be treated fairly. But that's the way you get buy-in to your vision. I want them to be able to rely on me to be a professional sheriff. In return, I expect them to be professional deputies. And uh, also, you're going to lose your second in command because you're like, if you already promised somebody that person to be your second in command and you choke or somebody. I will answer any question <laughs> that, that you throw at me. And with the exception of that one. But let me address it just, just a little bit. That's one thing I'm playing. Claim very close to the vest. I have a couple people that are highly qualified individuals that I doubt anyone in here would have an issue with. Who exactly, which one of those it would be, times change, circumstances change, when the time comes, I've got a very firm focus on a couple people that I would consider and that you do.